Hey, good day. Today we're going to work on geometric constructions. And so what I've done is AutoCAD allows us to insert uh, images. So I figured I'd just insert the image right on uh, the AutoCAD drawing surface. And we'll use that as a guide to help us draw the drawing. Uh, ultimately, when we create a geometric construction, what we're going to do is we're going to create typically more of the drawing than we actually need, trim it back to what we actually utilize. But what we're talking about is tangencies, OG curves, as you can see, we've got some OG curves in the uh, uh, the structure of our object. And ultimately, it's just laying out a clean drawing. So here's how we're going to begin. We'll flip back over to the Home tab, since I was in the Insert tab, bringing in the drawing. And we're going to begin by doing our four setup items. So the first setup item, if you remember, is Drawing Units. That's under the giant letter A, uh, under Drawing Utilities. And we'll go to the Units command. Taking a look at our drawing here, it is in decimal units, and it is in precision of two decimal places. So that will uh, guarantee that we're going to have the correct precision as we create the object. The second setup item is on the bottom, and that's polar tracking. So we're going to right mouse click on polar tracking and choose settings. Uh, it's a little icon on the bottom. With the polar tracking settings, we're going to make sure that it's at 5 degrees. Notice that there are no angles per se. Uh, there's some tangent lines that produce an angle, but notice that they are not dimensioned as an angle, so we don't have to worry about any additional angles. We'll make sure that it's based on absolute. The third step is object snaps. And again, object snaps are set based on what previously you've had them set at, unless you went in and changed them, or you're on a different computer. So the six that we typically use, endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection extension and perpendicular. I purposely do not choose tangent because I find that I use center significantly more often than tangent. Now in this drawing we know that we've got some tangents. We're not going to turn it on but I'm going to show you a, a enhanced way to pop up and utilize the tangent selection tool immediately when you need it. Our fourth setup item is layers. So we'll go up to the layer uh, up to the ribbon, choose the layer uh, manager, and in the layer manager we're going to create some layers. Now you'll notice that I've created some some existing layers here uh, previously, but we know that we can just hit the create new layer button and type in the new layer name. So I've created a center, a dimension, and an object layer, and I've given them colors. So with these particular uh, settings, it makes it easy uh, to go and select and just tradition, I always use green for center lines. Just the tradition. Many companies, though, will have it spec'd out um, specifically what colors uh, go with what line types. So we now need to select the line type option uh, relating to center. So I'm going to go ahead and select the line type uh, where it says continuous for that center line. And it doesn't allow me any other selections. So I need to load a new line type. Uh, previously, we've explained that the ACAD ISOs are metric scaled for English drawings, so it's 24.5 times the size that you need. Uh, we typically avoid those unless, of course, there's a specific reason. You'll see that we have three center lines to choose from, center, center 2, and X2. Think about how this works. The center 2 works for A size and B size, so up to about 11 by 17. Center works for C size, 18 by 22 size objects. Now this is object size, this is not drawing size, but physical objects, but giving you a paper size visual that you can uh, to look at. And X2 works for D size, so you know up to eight, uh, 22 by you know 34 in that range uh, of physical object size. When you get above that, we have to use a tool called line type scale. So we actually then select the base center line and then scale it line type scale for it to work. And that is how you create line type scales or line types that you can visually see on architectural drawings is that you just choose the base line type, use the command LT scale, line type scale, and put in the scaling factor you need to work with. So for our drawing today we're going to choose center 2, choose OK, but you see it didn't load on the big screen, on the big, big billboard. It only loaded in the select. 
So we need to select it again and then choose OK, and then it gets loaded onto the billboard, onto our major layer selection. We're also going to set our object layer to a line weight. One of the items that you need to, to kind of make note of is that all of our line weights are in millimeters, and this is based on mechanical pencils, because if you think about it and you pick up and, and look at a mechanical pencil, it's a pencil, it's a 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9 millimeter diameter lead. So what we're going to do is mimic that. So we're going to choose a 0 0.5 millimeter uh, lead and uh, choose OK. And that will give us a slightly larger, thicker object line when we go to print this compared to the dimension and center lines. Don't need to touch anything else. One minor thing that I did want to point out, um, I've had a f couple of students that have inadvertently select the print button or the don't print this layer button. And what happens is, is if you select this, it shows up on your screen as everything's okay. But when you go to print or create a PDF file, you don't see that layer. That layer does not output. I literally have had this happen on final exams. Not a good thing. Um, points get taken off for that kind of stuff. So just be aware of that. It's a really common problem. You inadvertently click it. Uh, and when you go to print something and you don't see it on the screen, or it's, you see it on the screen, but you don't see it on the print, immediately go to the layers. See if you've got that uh, don't print that layer button turned on. We'll go ahead and close the layer window. We've now done our four setup items. We're now ready to, to begin our actual drawing. So to begin the drawing, we're going to create the center lines first. We're going to start with the very center center line where the uh, octagon is. And before we do that, we're going to set our layer up as the center line layer. We'll choose the line command. And I'm going to draw a vertical line uh, about 10 inches long. Uh, you can, you know, if you take a look at the scale of this, I'm at 15 inches right here, so I'm going to back this down to about 10 to 11, and we'll be all set. Right mouse click, choose enter. I'll draw another line horizontally. Is it going to be perfectly in the middle? No. Does it need to be perfectly in the middle? No. This is for construction purposes. So it's going to be, this one's going to be a little bit longer, about 12 inches, only because I started a little bit farther away. Um, but basically, you, you kind of center it up and you work from there. It doesn't have to be perfect, though. That's the whole idea. So we're going to use this to uh, offset to the upper and lower areas of where the two circles are. So we're going to use the offset command, and the distance that we're going to offset is 3.75. So we're going to offset the vertical line to the right, 3.75. Take a look at the very top dimension. Bingo. We're going to take the horizontal line and offset down. Take a look at the left-hand side on the, on the uh, image with the dimensions. And that's our 3.75. I need to do the same thing by offsetting 2.25, but in the opposite direction. So the vertical line this time goes to the left and the horizontal line comes up 2.25 and what that provides is the actual layout of our screen so let me right mouse click and choose enter to finish that and magnify all right since i need to magnify i'm going to go ahead and shrink the uh the drawing just a little bit and bring it a little bit closer so i'm using some grip tools again i just select the grip and in this case i moved the object over so that way I can magnify this up a little bit more so you can see it and we don't uh, run into too big of a problem of our drawing layout. Let me go ahead and shift this over just a hair more. Perfect. I'll shrink it just a smidge and magnify up again. Excellent. So this is again just the the ability for us to to grab and uh, do this particular uh, structure. So typically when I create a drawing I'll start from the outside and then go to the inside because the inside is easy. You know, drawing a couple of circles, piece of cake. Drawing the outside shape, a little bit harder to do. But before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and 
um, grip these lines and kind of shrink the center points so I know where I'm working with. So I'm just going to take it, shrink it down a little bit. I'll take this one, move it over because I don't need it all the way. Same with here. I'm going to shrink this one from the top down. Make sure it's straight along the vertical. You don't want one uh, at an angle. You have to make sure that it's at a 0, 90, 180, 270 location. And all I'm doing is making it easier to visualize where the circles go. So now you can see how we took that offset original uh, set of center lines and now have uh, made them slightly smaller and more usable for the outer shape. So let's go ahead and create the lower outer shape. That's a uh, one inch radius arc. But realistically it's easier to draw a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle, center radius, start from the lower location, bring it out. We'll type in 1.0 inches. Okay, 1.0 inches because I know it's a one inch radius at the inner key. Did you notice what I just did? I know. It's a center line. It's not an object line. We left our center layer in, in place. So here's how you change from one layer to the other. Let's go ahead and grip the circle, change our layer to the object, and you'll notice that our object now, and I hit the escape key to get out of the grip, is now an object line. But let's go back up and look at the layer. It still says center. I need to go and reset that to object again. So the, the point being is that's a really common problem. You get rolling, you forget to go from one layer to the other. Take your time. If it happens, it's easy to fix by gripping it and changing it to the right layer. We'll do the same thing for center radius up at the top. Find the intersection position, one inch radius. And then in the very center, we can see that there's a 2.25 inch radius circle. So I'm going to go ahead and pick circle, center radius, 2.25. And there we go. So now I've got all the circles set up and ready to roll. Next is going to be creating the tangent circles on the bottom. So creating tangent circles, well, but they're arcs. Remember though, it's easier to create a circle than it is an arc. If I were to try to create these as tangent arcs at a set radius, uh, I'd be here, uh, this video, I probably wouldn't have enough time for it, guaranteed. You know, we'd be on like editing session 15 here trying to get this to work. It just doesn't work that easy. But it is really simple to do circles. When you hit the down arrow under circle, we've got two options for tangents. One is radius, one is triple tangent. Tangent tangent radius is what we need because it tells us what the radius of that arc is. We're going to pick the tangent point on the inside of the first circle and towards the bottom of the second. Does it have to be exact? No, I don't know exactly where the tangent points are. The computer will figure that out, but we have to be fairly close, just within the ballpark of where it needs to be. And it's a 3.0 uh, radius or a six inch diameter circle. And you can see that it automatically calculated the tangencies. So let's do that again. We're still set up for tangent tangent radius. I'm going to go ahead and pick my tangent and I'm going to pick my second tangent and type 3.0. Oh no, what happened? What happened was I didn't pick the right tangent point. So I picked the correct tangent point over here on this circle that it was on this side of that circle. But if you noticed, I quickly picked the point out on the opposite end. There's two tangent locations on a circle. They're opposite each other more or less. And so in this case, the tangent didn't go in the right direction. How do I fix it? Pick it, delete, redo. Tangent point, tangent point, 3.0. Perfect. When we get back in the next video, we'll go ahead and draw the uh, tangent lines, and we'll put some dimensions on.